Hello. In this video, I'll introduce you to the standard normal distribution. This is a special case of the normal distribution that you're already familiar with, but it's one that uh, is useful for drawing out general features of normal variables or making comparisons among different normal variables. So let me introduce you to this by actually asking you to solve a little puzzle. I'm basically going to ask you to take a normal random variable and standardize it. Um, so the, the variable we'll use is the height of adult men. So the height of adult men is a normally distributed random variable x with mean mu of 69 inches and variance sigma squared of 8.4 inches squared. In other words, uh, standard deviation sigma of 2.9 inches. So we have a particular man, he's 71.3 inches tall. What I want you to do is express this man's height in terms of standard deviations above or below the mean height. And you can give your answer to one significant digit. So go ahead and give that a try and let's see what you can come up with. So um, uh, if you think about this problem, right, you've got a height of 71.3 inches. That's clearly higher than the mean of 69 inches. More precisely, it's 2.13 inches higher. 2.13 inches is 0.8 or 80% of a single standard deviation. So the answer here is 0.8. This man's height is 0.8 standard deviations above the mean. Now, maybe you got that answer, maybe you didn't. If you didn't, don't worry. Uh, just a minute or so, I'll explain exactly how we got that. Um, but I wanted you to do this mainly to give you, um, you know, uh, put you into the, um, into the mindset of thinking about what it means to standardize a variable. So what we've done here, that value is 0.8, is now a value of the standard normal variable. Uh, the standard normal distribution is simply a normal distribution that has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So a variable that has this distribution is represented by the letter Z. And we can show this graphically. This looks like our familiar uh, uh, bell curve for the pr probability density function of a normal random variable. But you'll note that this variable Z has a mean of zero and it has a standard deviation of one. And I'm representing the size of the standard deviation just by this little horizontal uh, line with brackets. Um, so any random variable, any normal random variable x, let's call it x, can be converted to the standard normal random variable z as follows. We take a value of x, subtract its mean, and then divide this difference by the standard deviation. So let's, let's take a look at that height example I asked you to solve. Um, the mean for that variable x is 69 inches. The standard deviation for that variable x is 2.9 inches. And the particular measurement that we wanted to standardize was 71.3 inches. We have a man who is 71.3 inches tall. How do we convert that to a value of z? z equals x minus mu over sigma. In this case, that means 71.3 inches minus 69 inches divided by 2.9 inches. That's how we get this answer 0.8. And basically we're saying then this man is 0.8 standard deviations above the mean height. So why do we do this? Why standardize a variable like this? There's a few good reasons. Um, basically what z does is express x in a universal scale, the number of standard deviations from the mean. Any random variable, any normal random variable can be described the same way. Uh, this is helpful if you want to compare random variables with different means and variances. Uh, and it's also very helpful if you want to highlight general features that all normal distributions share. So let me talk about each of those two advantages in turn. First, let's consider um, um, three normal random variables. These are the lengths of three different lizard species. They're all normally distributed. Let's look at species one here. It's a pretty big lizard. The mean is 100 centimeters, uh, and it's got a moderate amount of variation around that mean. Look at species two, these ones are quite a bit smaller. The mean is only about 60 centimeters, but look how much more variation there is. It's, you have a much higher likelihood of being even, you know, uh, tens, several tens of centimeters away from the mean compared to species one. Look at species three, these ones are smaller still. The mean is only about 30 centimeters, but look how small the variance is. It's very unlikely to see a lizard who's more than say 15 centimeters or so above or below the mean. So we see very different means, very different variances. What that means is if I have a lizard who's 80 centimeters long, well, what that means really depends on what species it is. An 80 centimeter long uh, lizard of species one is actually a pretty small lizard, right? It's way over here in the left tail of the distribution. Um, but if that 80 centimeter long li lizard were instead in species two, that would actually be a pretty big lizard, well above the mean. 
And if it were that 80 centimeter lizard were from species three, it would be kind of a shockingly large lizard, so large that it doesn't even show up on our graph, way bigger than the biggest ones that we're likely to see. So the raw value in centimeter is a little hard to interpret when we're comparing multiple species with different means and different variances. If we instead um, standardize these, we convert these centimeter measures into standard deviation measures. We have each, you know, now we talk about lizards who are like one, two, or three standard deviations above the mean, or one, two, or three standard deviations below the mean. And we've expressed all three species in that same kind of scale. And then we can also take this now and put them on the same um, graphical scale. So it reveals that really these are all, in a sense, identical distributions if you express them in terms of standard deviations above or below the mean. So now we can consider that 80 centimeter lizard. Well, if it's from species one, that ends up being a value of something like minus two, but clearly an unusually small lizard. If it's from species two, it has a value of like 1.5 or so, clearly a pretty big lizard. And if it were from species three, it doesn't even show up on our scale, but it might have a value of like seven or eight or something extremely large. And so this scale then is very easy to say for any given lizard how big it is relative to other members of its species. That's a very handy feature uh, that standardization gives you. The other thing I talked about, that you, the advantage of standardization is highlighting general features of a distribution. So you remember the two standard deviation rule. We can really see where that comes from very clearly if we look at the standard distribution Z. So to remind you what the, the two standard deviation rule is, it says that if you have a random variable that has a sort of normal distribution or something similar to a normal distribution, you know, unimodal, symmetrical, roughly bell-shaped, then um, we can say that the probability that that random variable takes a value between two standard deviations below the mean and two standard deviations above the mean is about 95%. That's true for Z as well as for any other variable. So we can express, we can say it here, the probability that Z is greater than mu minus two sigma and less than mu plus two sigma is about 0.95. But of course, the Z, the standard normal um, uh, distribution Z, the mean is zero and the standard deviation sigma is one. So this actually simplifies to something like this. The probability that Z is between minus two and plus two is about 0.95. If we look at the Z distribution graphically, then it really becomes very clear. Uh, we sh if we shade this area between minus two and plus two um, standard deviations of, you know, above and below the mean, it's very clearly that we're looking at something roughly 95% of the total area under this curve. Um, more precisely, we could say that uh, if we wanted to talk about the probability that Z is exact, that exactly 95% of Z falls between two, um, uh, boundaries, we could say uh, the probability that Z is greater than negative 1.96 and less than positive 1.96 is exactly 0.95. Um, but, but of course, this is so close to two and we're not, we don't really need to be so precise that we just round this off into the two standard deviation rule and we say that Z or indeed any uh, normal distribution or any uh, variable that has a distribution similar to a normal, we can say that the probability uh, that the, its values will fall between two standard deviations below and two standard deviations above the mean is about 95%. So that's an example of this sort of handy general feature that we can get uh, by standardizing a variable.